All right, so you've probably heard of relational databases like MySQL or NoSQL databases like, for instance, MongoDB, DynamoDB. But what if you can use Notion as a database for your data? Now, that may seem a bit crazy, but hear me out. If you're doing home automations or you're into smart home tech, you may want a place to store textual data. You may want to even store something that's even more unstructured, especially if you're incorporating AI into the mix. And this is where this gets extremely powerful. Using Notion combined with Home Assistant and Node-RED, you can basically start your journey on the world of text. And if you don't know what the world of text is. 20 years ago, I got into this guy named David Allen, who basically said, never ever store anything in your brain. Immediately capture. What I do now is I capture a concept or a structure for an essay or something. I capture it immediately in a note. And now that it's text, and because I'm fairly proficient with Vim and the terminal, my whole world is text and the ability to manipulate text. And I have all my notes in text. And when I record something that's actually sound, I immediately transcribe it, send it to Notion. And so it's also in text. So now I have this world of text that I could use, and now I have this AI infrastructure that manipulates text using AI to get results that help us as humans. I have another video that explains that. The TLDR of it is AI has given text its comeback story, and the main source of protein for AI is indeed text. So if we can somehow save and store a lot of this textual information that AI can understand in a way that we can understand, then I think we're on our way to something much more magical than just turning on and off lights. Okay, so with that out the way, let me show you how you can use Notion within your automations. Now, fair warning, this is going to use Node-RED as the main driver between Notion and your smart home. You can probably do this with within Home Assistant natively. That's not this video. I have here this Notion doc. Inside, I'm gonna look at this YouTube document right here. If you're not used to Notion, Notion is basically a database. I guess that's the best way to put it. You can nest documents with inside documents and it can link to other documents in a way that's similar to how databases link to other items or entries in different tables. You can view this. So right here at this top level YouTube, here is basically a document and it has links to other documents. You can see here within Node-RED, I have these blocks. These do not come standard within Node-RED. You have to install this. So how you can do that is simply go to here and then into Manage Palette. And then if you type in Notion, you're gonna see this one, Node-RED Notion. This is the one that I have installed currently. Once you install it, you're gonna have all of these blocks available to you or these nodes. Now with these nodes install, you're gonna to have to do one more thing. You're gonna, well, technically two more things. You're gonna need a token ID so these blocks can access your Notion environment. And you're also going to need to create that integration piece that would give you that token that this needs. So let's start with the ladder. If I go inside Notion and then inside connect to manage connections. We can click on here, develop or manage connect integrations. Now I already have one here, but once you're logged in, you can click on new integration. You can tell it what workspace to work on. You'd be able to tell it whether it's internal or public. I would suggest doing internal. You can give it a logo if you like. And then of course you can add an integration name. Once you do that, you're gonna have this page where it tells you your internal integration secret and you're just gonna show it and copy that ID. That's what you're gonna to need to put inside Node-RED in order to get started. Back inside Node-RED, you can pick up any block, just place it down. When you double click inside, let's do a naked one. So you can get any block. So I'm gonna put this one out, double click. It's gonna look like this at first. You're gonna click on this pencil icon. You're gonna give it a name, any name that you want. And you're gonna paste here the token secret that you got from that integration page. So this, is the inject node. You can type in inject. So once you have it, you can use the get database and then you can just drag this out here. Once you do, just choose the integration that you've previously installed, click add. And I want to, I want you to notice one thing. Inside here, there's no other information that you can add. So it looks kind of suspect as to like, how does it know what to get? 
When you click on this book here in the corner, this will give you the help that you need to figure out how this works. And here it tells you this is the get database node. It tells you what it does. And here's it expects this page ID. And this is the notion database UUID. Now, the way that this message that ID gets populated is entirely up to you. But because we're just using the inject node, we can simply create a spot for it and then pass it along. And we do that by like this. I'm going to remove this and just show you what I have here currently. Here is the page ID. So we have this message, we add in page ID, which is what it expected. Now I want to access this page. So to get the page ID, we can click on the three dots, click copy link, just paste the link out here. And then you're going to notice this, you're going to see this URL. That is the ID that you're going to need everything without the YouTube portion or whatever you name yours. It's just going to be from this, this numeric value up until this question mark. All right. I'm going to click done deploy to see the information that comes from this node. I have here a debug. I just made sure that it has complete message object selected. So when I click the timestamp, notice here, this says that could not find the database with that ID. Now that's because this isn't a database. This is a page. I'm fairly new to notion, so I'm not used to all of their nomenclature. So we're going to get access to, let's just go to this one. To do that, we're going to use this three dots. We're going to find copy link. We're going to paste it out. And then this string here, that seven, seven, eight, up until the ampersand, that is the page or the database ID that we need. So inside the timestamp, we're going to copy, we're going to paste it in, we're going to click done, and we're going to deploy. One other thing we're going to have to do is in order for the node to access your information, it needs to have permission or that page needs to give your integration permission to read information. To do that, when you go back inside Notion for the parent, so for this file here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the three dots and I have here, it's connected to Home Assistant. That is the integration. You're going to have to just find your integration here. So connect to, you'll find your integration within that list, and then you're going to be able to access it with Node Red. All right. So with all of that done, if I click this button here, 400, let's see what it says. Query fail should not be, V should not be present. It seems like I've pasted this data wrong. Query failed validation query V should be not present instead. Okay. Here's the issue. It's this right here. So this section here is that database ID that we want. I believe we grabbed the wrong section the last time. Yeah. See this ends in DC eight and this one ends in DC eight. This was the wrong one. This is not what we need. All right. That should be correct. Done deploy. And if we run it, there you go. 200. Now we can look at the payload and we can see that this is a database object, which is correct. And then we can see the title video idea database. That's correct. So now we have access to the database. This doesn't give you much information inside. This just gives you the metadata for it. So if you want to do things like view that data, uh, the metadata time it was edited, stuff like that, that's what this is for. So the page that was that linked to the database, I'm going to show you how to grab that. The idea is that, again, this is going to simply get you the metadata for that page. So you're going to see things like the title date, it was modified, created, so on and so forth. We're working our way down to editing soon, but I just want you to get familiar with the different paradigms that's here. So I recently created this page by simply pressing this plus button It added a page inside this YouTube page. Now to get the page ID is the same as getting the database ID. We simply the three dots, we go to copy link, we can just paste it here and you see how it says user comments and then the ID, but realistically what we want is just that did the digits right in between. So that one zero zero up until the, or before the question mark, that's what we want. So this will be the ID right here, just that number. So I have here another inject node. I already have it pasted inside that ID. This is the get page. You can see that right here. When you double click into it, you just make sure that you assign it to the correct config. So for me, it's the home assistant integration. And then I have it outputting to the debug node. So let's run it and see what happens. 200. Awesome. So it looks like it worked. If we were to check, let's see. So that's the parent ID. Object is a page. Can we see up oh, here goes properties, title, 
user comments. So yeah, so it's getting the information. And again, this is all metadata. So you have access to like the URLs and such. Things get interesting when we try to edit this page. And this is where I guess the magic comes in. Imagine you want your smart home to keep a list of let's say devices that go offline and how frequent they go offline. You can have it write to a Notion database so you can see and go and address it at some future point in time. Let's say you have calendar events or to-do lists, thoughts. Let's say you just have thoughts and you want to just write all of that stuff down. You can tell it to your smart home. It can dictate it to this particular Notion database. And it may not seem like a big deal at first, but I have an automation that I personally use that shows you what this can do. So let's go to looking for the text data. Now the text data is basically going to be within a block and a block can have many other children, similar to how pages can have many other pages, but the block is what represents the text content of a page. Now the block ID is going to be the exact same as the page ID. In the case for this page here, this has no blocks. It probably has like a title block. So we may see one, but it doesn't have any significant blocks. So if we were to run this, see, we have block ID click on block children and click on this book, you see that it's looking for a block ID. So then in the inject node, we have here the block ID, and this is the same as the page ID. So when I run it and it shows it as a list, it's a type block. Let's put something inside. I'm going to re-enable this. Insert. Now this is the append block. This will let you write text to the Notion page. Now, when we click on this block and we click on the book, we can see the type of like, like what it expects. And that message object looks pretty complex. So for testing purposes, all I did was copy this and I just restructured it just a little bit for what I wanted. And this is what it looks like. So we have here, it needs it in the message or it needs it in the payload. And then in the payload, we have children, which is what it expects. And then it's an array of blocks or objects. So here we have this object block type paragraph in the paragraph, it's a rich text and it's a type text. And here's the text information. We're telling that text that this is a link and it has a link to where it needs, wants to go. And then here is the text that is going to be written into the notion page. And again, remember, we also need the block ID. It needs this in order to know where to write that information to. So this is the same as the page that we mentioned from before. So what we're going to expect to see is within this page here, some text or information should pop up after we run the automation. So let's deploy. All right, moment of truth. We're going to run it. Look at that text immediately popped up. It's a link. So we can click on it and it'll take us to wherever that hyperlink was. And I think it was a Wikipedia file. Exactly. So now we're able to write and we can append as much information as we want to it. Why is this important? With the concept of world of text, we have all of this information that we can now pass to, let's say, an LLM that can read it, tag it, derive insights from it, make connections from it. Better yet, a CRM, a personal CRM. If I wanted to create a way for myself to keep track of the things that I talk about with my family and friends, in the future we have another conversation, I can ask them my smart home, hey, I'm about to call my mom, what was the last thing that we talked about? And then it gives me the summary or the highlights, the important things of what we talked about when we last spoke. This type of stuff becomes way more useful than just, oh, text on a page or something being stored. And this allows the, our smart home to have a peek into our thoughts and helps us to make better sense of it, to derive connections and to remind us of things that we would have difficulty remembering. Now, some of you may not like Notion because, you know, it's all goes over to the cloud and requires internet connection. And, and I understand that. By all means, feel free to use Obsidian. If you'd like to use Obsidian, I'm sure you can do the same with that. And remember, I'm using Notion as a database, so you could use an actual literal database if you so choose. The one reason why I tended towards Notion is when I was already using it. I already, I already put a lot of my thoughts down into it. This lowers the the level of effort that I need in order to make this work with for my daily life. But if I could appeal to you, whether you use Notion or let's say something like Obsidian, the idea is that that interface, like the, the thing that holds the text, that is usable on two sides. Having an application like Notion where I can go in, 
I'm already there typing and doing my thing and I can just create another page and just write my thoughts out or go to where I know the smart home is reading and write my thoughts there and then know that the smart home will be able to see it and pick it up. This extends my utility of how my smart home works. But the idea is that you make this as usable and as user-friendly as possible. So that way it's an easy lift on your part with interacting with your smart home. I'm, I'm off my soapbox now. I promise you that you've never tried this combination. You can export your Notion data directly into Home Assistant using tricks learned in this video here. Or if you want something fun and informative, check out my journey creating a smart home finance automation. Bruh, my soul nearly left my body with what happened in part three. You gotta check it out.